we have had so many people asking us about online dating and, and feeling feeling overwhelmed by it. So that's why I thought I'd, I'd, find, I'd get Julie on here. She's an award-winning dating coach, mobile and online dating expert, an internationally known best-selling author. As an early adopter of the internet, Julie spent over 25 years helping singles find love online. With over two decades of experience and a passion for everything digital, Julie coaches singles from college at to the college age, the large population of baby boomers looking <clears throat> for a first or second chance at love. As a Los Angeles-based celebrity dating coach, her clients span the globe from New York to San Francisco and London to Sydney. Julie believes age, zip code, and country codes are, are no longer barriers to love. We love hearing all that. Yay, welcome, Julie. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Happy uh, Valentine's month. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a day after the Super Bowl and it's a Monday and half the restaurants are closed. So people are celebrating um, in their own ways um, without the pressure this year. Well, I do I do like it that it's not a single day. I mean, that it, if, you know, if you can spread it out, I think it's really crazy to everyone trying to get to a restaurant on February 14th and you know, they're crowded, they're overpriced, they've got all these menus. So I like the idea that it's kind of, people are going even before, maybe after. So, uh, and we are preparing, we're getting prepared here for our own kind of love time with Julie. We're gonna find out more about it. So um, Julie, as we were chatting right before that we started and Julie said she would, uh, I have made a profile on match.com because I'm recently single. And even though I've, I've met someone, I still thought, well, I should see what it's all about because I don't know how these things work. So I'm gonna share my screen and you guys can get a good laugh. And she's going to, she hasn't seen it before. She's heard a few, she's heard about a few things that I've done that are really questionable. <laughs> so um, let me share my screen and let me find my, my profile of, and you can get a good laugh and let me find it first because it's so, <laughs> uh, where is it? <laughs> okay, look, everybody's looking at my whole life here. Oh, yeah. that's just the way it is during <laughs> post-quarantine post, post lifestyle. I know. So you're on, you're on Match. I'm on Match. Let's see, um, me, Meet I'm- from Flushing. Okay, so uh, uh, people need to know that I put myself, I did a couple of naughty things. I didn't put my real name because I was scared. And I shaved some years off my age. I shaved three years off my age. And I put on in New York. And okay, that just makes me sound like the biggest liar. And the, the thing is, I am moving to New York as of April 1st. So let's, um, can you see this, Julie? I can, but I'm going to put my glasses on to get a closer okay. look at what's going on here. So you okay. can see, you can Click see. Click view more. Okay, Patrice, not really, but you've got a great smile. It's a headshot, so it's a casual photo. Did you only put up one photo? No, I have about 10. Okay, too many. Okay, do you guys taking notes? You taking notes? <laughs> too many. How many is the right number? Six or seven for match. I mean, you basically don't, but if you post too many photos, someone has an entire look at your life and there's like nothing left for them to think about. You know, you're just not, you're giving it all away. It's like, okay, I know my Patrice's life story. Let me move on to the next profile. So you always I like that you got my name. wanting more. <laughs> what did somebody Patrice. say? I see you've got my name on there. Oh, you borrowed Patrice's name. No, Patrice is my middle name. Oh, oh, really? I never knew that. We talked about that. I thought we talked about oh, that. I don't remember. That's so funny. Okay. <laughs> so I, your screen's not big enough for my eyes. So I am going to put on these uh, blinding glasses. Okay. So here's my little, you want me to read what I wrote? Or can you, everybody can read it? I didn't know uh, that. Reading, why don't you read it so people on Facebook Live can hear it? Okay. And yeah. so uh, I did not know I was going to be doing this. <laughs> anyway. 2022 is a homecoming of sorts. Exactly 40 years ago, I moved to the city for the first time and worked as a writer and editor for magazines. After 10 years, I moved to Austin, Texas and have since lived more adventurously than I ever imagined I would. Traveling widely with my family and for my career in journalism, 
starting a lavender farm in a rural town, living in Mexico, writing two books and launching my own business. I'm back in the city after a long-term marriage that was successful for 25 of 29 years. I'm looking for someone new with a taste for adventure and a far from done attitude. Okay, so do you wanna know what I think? <laughs> well, first of all, <laughs> you should put your real age because somebody's going to do a Google search and they're going to find you somewhere and they're going to know that you know you are not your age. I get it. You want to fit into search. Every woman says they want to fit into search. But think about it for a minute. What if you were um, at a party and you met someone and you were striking up a conversation and you know things you know really you were connecting. Uh, would somebody say, wait a second, Jeannie, excuse me, um, how old are you again? You know what, that would never happen, that conversation. So you need to own your age. And believe me, I went online, you know, two and a half decades ago and I lied about my age too. So I think it's just this insecurity that we have as women that we have this expiration date on love and we are not going to fit into a search. And that is the farthest from the truth. There are people, I know in their 70s and 80s finding love on dating apps. So you need to say your own age. And if you're worried that someone thinks you're taking five years off your age, just post something in the bottom and say, my, my age is accurate, my photos are recent. Because yeah. that's yeah. really refreshing to a guy because they're already expecting you not to look like your profile photo and they're expecting you not to be that age. Um, so a couple of things, okay. I don't know where to begin. Okay, so 2022 is a is a homecoming of sorts. Uh, I would just take that off. Okay. All because right. it's it doesn't really. I mean, you could start with you know exactly 40 years ago. I moved to New York City for the first time, and now I'm on my way back. You make it a little more friendlier. Yeah, because I read that and. I don't know what, how terrible 2021 was, but you said you became recently single, so, and we were in a pandemic. Uh, so I would, I would take that out. I like the fact that you were talking about your professional career. Uh, and I would say that uh, <laughs> the place, <laughs> I've got to put this. Okay, so uh, when you've lived more adventurously than you ever imagined, uh, traveling wildly with my family, so, Basically, the wild travels was Mexico and lavender farm. No, or is there that, something else? Listen, yeah. I traveled. I took my kids all over the world. Uh, my husband and I took. A, we did homeschooling. I, I mean, all through South America, Africa, Europe. Well, that's uh, really interesting. I during the pandemic. Don't say during the pandemic. Just not say during I, the, not during the pandemic. The, you don't have to use the p word. Just say. Um, I was lucky to homeschool my children and we traveled to name the number of countries and then 14, add in two or 14 three countries, 14 countries. So I went to 14 countries. I mean, that's really impressive. I went, okay. I traveled with my family. My, my children were homeschooled and we, we visited 14 countries and some of my favorites were, and then name two or three. Okay. Because you want to be very specific because okay. you're talking about wild and somebody doesn't know what wild means. So does that mean that you're going to be a vagabond forever and you're not going to want to be in a relationship? That's why I think it's great to say you went with your family and your children. So you okay. show that family is important and you weren't this wild, drunken woman <laughs> sleeping with every guy in every port. Oh, man, that's what I that's what I did in the 70s as a single female. <laughs> <laughs> I went through I went to yes, but you were young. countries. <laughs> okay, let's 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 move on and and uh, yeah. Okay. Um. Anyway, uh, put a put a um, dash between long and term. Um. Okay. Good. I'm getting coffee edited because too. people get really hung up on grammar and punctuation, and you're saying you're a writer and long term. So I take my profiles and I put them into <laughs> Grammarly, and I like. Okay. Do everybody oh. needs to take their profiles script it in like a Microsoft Word document, put it into a grammar or spell checker mm -hmm. and see if there's a better way to get your point across and see if there's any punctuation or spelling issues. I mean, I, I mean, it's not like it's a profile where the, everything is I with a little dot. I mean, those are <laughs> eyesores for sure. Okay. okay. 
Oh, let, so, um, back in, so instead of saying I'm back in the city, I would just say I'm back in NYC. Okay. Yeah. And okay, I'm back in Because I'm getting confused. You went to 12 countries. What city are you in? I know. I should probably just, you, I probably need to redo it all. I can't do it probably when we're talking. But anyway, but yeah. But those but are just, in, at first glance, at first glance, I would, I, I would say that. Um, so was your marriage good for 25 or 29 years? It was successful for 25 or 29. What oh, for 29 years. That's too specific. That's like talking about like, oh my God, you had a rocky end of marriage. Just well, like I just, what I thought was important is I'm not a bitter, I'm not a bitter divorce. I'm not bitter. I recognize that I had a great marriage for a long time. Great. And so I had a great marriage for over 20 years. Okay. Okay. After. I and I leave it at that. I don't want to know about 26 <laughs> to 29 if I'm a guy yeah. and I might want you as my partner. Okay. Who else has the guts to do this, to go and be critique like this? Anybody else? Come on. I'm just kidding. Um, oh, I, I just, I love whipping profiles into shape. I mean, it's okay. really, it's really a lot of after fun. Long, after, it, after a, look, back in the city after, what did you say? A, a successful marriage. After a successful after, yeah, marriage. Yeah, for, 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 for over 20, for over 25 years, no, for oh, over yeah. 20 years. Just leave it as for over 20 years. We don't need to be that specific. Yeah. Nobody needs to do the math and figure out your real age, right? Okay. Yeah, oh, that's right. I married when I was a little baby. <laughs> um, yeah. Yep. I'm looking for somebody new with a taste for adventure and a far from done attitude. What does far from done attitude mean to you? That means that you're not acting old. You're act, you act, you, you realize there's so much good stuff ahead. I'm, I, I won't be with anybody who acts. I don't want anybody. I, I, I like old. that. I right. like that sentence. Yeah. It, leaves, like something, it leaves intrigue. It's a little... Intrigue is good. I think one of the things that we try and do is, is we look for the positive statements instead of the negative statements on dating profiles. So far from done. So, so I, I, I'm wondering if there's another way to say that. You know, you're looking for someone who has a zest for life and a taste for adventure. You know, yeah, waiting for, for know. to me, zest for life seems like I'm so sure. cliched and broad. I wanted okay. So, well, then, I, then leave that. Then leave that far from done. At far from done. Well, um, it's something to attitude. think about. It's far. From, it's something yeah. I can think about. Um, okay. So, so that's the 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 essay part. And then you can- uh, Let's look at the photos. Okay. okay, so let's pull up your photos. Ah, view, I'll do view. Okay. View the photos. Uh, um, well, the first photo is great because you're smiling and your primary photo always needs to be a headshot with a great smile. No, I and over 40% of men swipe right or want to match with a woman who is smiling. Ah, 40%. Yeah. Want to match with a smiling, okay. Want to match with somebody who's smiling. All right. Uh, okay, so why is this? So there's one. I just, I just. I just it's such a great shot. I just wish you didn't have sunglasses on, but it's such know, a great shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, my little Usually, I, usually I say nix the sunglasses, but it's a great shot. And you're smiling and you've got those adorable braids. <laughs> and I want to know. On a trip to Santa Fe, it looks very Santa Fe like. Yeah. September 2021. Great that you captioned it and great that you captioned it with the year because everybody wants to, you know, know when was that photo taken? Right. So I always tell people when you post your photos and you need to mix them up, um, caption it with the year it was taken. Oh, yeah, so that's you, a good. Yeah. So I you agree. don't look 10 years older when you meet in person. Exactly. Exactly. We don't want that. And then this next one is. I don't know, I just kind of like this picture, but I don't know. Um, no, it's got to go. It's blurry. Um, and it's got, it's got so much ceiling in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I would say that you need to, you need to find a full, length, a full length body shot where you look crystal clear in the photo and it doesn't, I'm looking at like, a, and like the an air photo in the back. If she likes it. No, I would just say, have a friend take a photo with you uh, on their mobile phone 
take some photos with you outdoors with some outdoor lighting because it's nice and it's casual, but it's just, here's the thing. I always say you're only as good as your worst photo. And I know they say a picture tells a thousand words, but you're only as good as your worst photo, which is why I am just, you know, bewildered about these people with the selfies in the bathroom. Oh, you know, they, they hire a photographer, they spend $400, they go on a photo shoot, everything looks amazing. It doesn't look like a LinkedIn profile. It doesn't look, you know, like somebody's looking to hook up and then there's the selfie. <laughs> so um, I just think there's, I'm sure there are other photos that we can add in. Plus, you also said you had over six. So let's see what else is on the queue. I love it. Yeah. This is how that is great. <laughs> yeah. This the is caption great. Is, the caption is, this is how I feel most of the time, really. And it's true. I'm, that's mostly. There's your zest for life. Yeah, there's my zest for my beautiful dogs. I probably could take, I mean, I love my dog. If I could take it out, it don't look great down there. I could take that one out. Find another, find another shot with the dogs. Um, because you know, there's a reason we call it puppy love. And if you have a photo with you and your pet as the last photo, uh, it's very appealing because you know you love your dogs. You have a lot of love in you for another. So yeah. I like puppy shots as long as there's one and as long as it's the last photo. Last photo. You guys are who's taking notes? Who's I taking am. notes? Okay, <laughs> that's a good one. Okay, this I I, I just like that picture, but you might not like it. You see it. She's gonna say no. She's gonna say no. Can't see your eyes. I say fun Can't with see glasses. Your eyes. Okay, taking take my glasses off. Why did I put that there? Um, anyway. Well, the thing is, a man wants to be able to like look right into your eyes, you know, when he's looking at your profile. So that's a barrier. I mean, you had the one sunglass shot, but it was adorable. But one is Too but that was not your best. That's not your best photo right now. So far, your best photos are the one on top of the mountain, the primary shot. And the cow, the cowgirl hat. The cowgirl hat. Okay. And this is just to show, I'm a big skier, so I don't know. And it's, it's just taken. So I think that's important to have. It shows that you're not like a lump on a log. You don't just, you know, mm -hmm. read and write. You have a life and you're adventurous and you're athletic and you're in good shape and you can make it down that hill. So um, you will attract another skier and you can go on lots of fun ski vacations together. <laughs> Okay, this one was a bike I did a on an island hopping trip in Scotland. Lots of pedaling with stops at whiskey distilleries. How perfect is that? I don't know. So anyway, um, again, you've got sunglasses on. I know you're sunglasses. so bulked up in the photo because you're just wearing tons of clothing. Okay, that it doesn't show you how fit you really are. So I would um, take that one off. Okay, and there's, that, there's that one. Yeah, I there like that. that. That one I can take out, I think. Wait, 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 don't take that out. This one? Yeah. No, I love it. I don't know why. Why don't you like it? Oh, it's I a really like... natural look. Yeah. It's a very I thought natural gonna, photo. I thought you were gonna say you didn't like it. Anyway. I do like it. Okay. It's very natural, yeah. confident. It shows confidence. It shows, it just shows so many things. It just shows, hey, I'm, I'm a confident woman. I'm a happy person. And won't you be lucky to have a date with me? Aha. yes okay okay and then okay i love this photo it's blurry but i just so love this photo but you're going to say it's blurry i'm going to say it's blurry and you've traveled to so many countries i'm sure there are other great photos that you can put in its place okay and keep in mind we have to take a couple of off we really need to end you know, we need to take three off yes oh uh, yeah and there's that one okay we're back to that we're going to keep that one yeah. yeah okay okay there's the photos and then the other thing that, they, oh, they had, you asked, my best scar story was when, and I answered that, I was racing mini bikes in Copper Canyon, Mexico and slid out on some loose sand. Oh, and there's the one when I burned myself during a welding lesson. Wow, that's <laughs> romantic, very romantic. Hmm, okay. Uh, <laughs> romantic. <laughs> it might intimidate it, it might intimidate a guy? Uh, I would put something in a little more romantic and soft or you just sound like, you know, you're so independent, you're getting banged up all the time. You are. I'm getting banged up. <laughs> I don't mean banged, banged up as in scars, not as in banging in the bedroom. <laughs> okay. Okay. Craziest, craziest <laughs> travel story. I was in Cairo during the Arab, Arab Spring on vacation with my school-aged children. <laughs> 
But as a question to that, I mean, I really liked that. Which one? Isn't there something that that thing about where you burned yourself and oh, yeah. et cetera? I mean, isn't there something to letting guys know what they're getting into? <laughs> Absolutely, I agree with in, you. There. In, in in attracting someone who likes a strong woman who gets her hands dirty. I don't know. I'm just asking. There's a, there's a, there's a fine balance because, you know, guys can hang out with guys. That's what they do on Super Bowl Sunday. And usually when they're looking for a woman at this point, they're looking for somebody that's independent. They're looking for somebody who, uh, you know, whose life could be better with them in it. They may not even be looking for marriage They're looking for companionship. They're yeah. looking for somebody that's active and interesting. Um, and not someone who's depressed. And certainly this program doesn't come across as depressed at all. But I don't want it to end up being so independent that there's no room for the man. How about if I say, instead of racing mini bikes, I'm, I was just riding, riding dirt bikes. No, racing is fine. And racing's fine. It's fine. I mean, that's what you were doing. You know, you weren't just tooling around on a putt putt. You know, <laughs> you were out and about. But, but, I don't want someone to be intimidated by your profile. Okay. All I've right. I've heard that and from men a lot. Oh, wow. She sounds so interesting, but she's out of my league. How many times do I hear that every okay. day? Okay. Oh, my God. Can you just... I'm so sorry. Um, this is not supposed to happen. Um, so then there's this one, the part where the, the craziest travel story Cairo and the Arab Spring, is that? Well, that sounds crazy already. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so you're with your kids, what happened? Yeah, uh, we stayed on Tahir Square and watched the protesters. Um, I mean, it's a long story. It's, it's a long story. But, but I, I would want you to elaborate because I, I don't want to be saying, I don't want someone to say, can someone turn their ringer yeah. off? <laughs> Can you turn the volume down? <laughs> no, I am so sorry. That I usually turn everything off. Um, so um, anyway, but I'm curious about that. So, so that's a very dangerous story. So, so you ended up watching this protest. So why don't you add that in? You're with your children. What did your kids do? Did they run away? Did you hide in a hotel room? No, you sat and you watched it. And that's a really unique story that I won't see on someone else's profile. So I would elaborate that on that. Okay. Okay. Um, so, okay, elaborate there. And then this one, you're, I don't know if you're going to like it either, but I put favorite quality in person, someone who can make me laugh until I pee in my pants. <laughs> uh, no, I don't like it. <laughs> I mean, look at no, no man wants to visual visualize a woman peeing in her pants or going shopping for depends because she has some problems in that area. So I would take that off. Okay, that one. <laughs> I hope people are being entertained by this. <laughs> no, listen, I'm, 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 I'm enjoying this because I, I've had somebody who did, we did mine for me and I did the same thing you did. And I had a really great guy I was having a conversation with. And as soon as I started talking to him about all the carpentry and construction I used to, I, I do and still do, he completely got turned off. He says, I don't want a woman who gets her hands dirty like that. And he hung oh. up on him, you know, so it's like, well, no, thank you. Okay. Can you, can you say I make make me laugh until I get tears in my eyes? Or, or yeah, I'll, yes. I'll, I'll I'll fix that. I'll fix that. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. The visual of you peeing in your pants is just not very <laughs> romantic. Laugh till I can not, not, I can't breathe. Till I can't breathe. Okay. All right. So anything else? Well, uh, besides the age, um, the height is correct. Yep, the height's correct. Okay. Um, all right. So did we find three photos that we were going to nix? Uh, we're gonna nix. We're going to nix um, this one. Yeah. We're going to nix. We're going to find a better dog. Find another dog. Find a better dog one. And we're going to nix that one. We're going to nix this one. That's two. Uh-huh. We're going to nix this one. Keep this one. one love two. it. Yeah, nix that one. OK, yeah. great. And think about some all of the places you've traveled. I'm sure you have just a camera roll filled with interesting photos. Well, but, it, the, but a lot of them are older. That's what nothing I Nothing better than just grab it. Grab, Grab a friend, go outdoors, pick out a couple of outfits, and just have fun taking photos. Just giggle and laugh. Imagine yourself being on a date with someone and take some new photos, and then you get to caption them and it says 2022. Truth and advertising. Okay. 
Okay, that's good. What, how, what, how many years back is, should you stop with photographs? Five. Five. Five, okay. Five. And if you have this like amazing photo, I mean, something really extraordinary, and it's longer than I've just captioned it with the year it was taken. You just say, you yeah, know. I, I would have um, that. I used to be a mountain climber. Yeah, uh, I haven't climbed, yeah. Okay. But, but, you know, but the fact that you did climb is really interesting and you can find a great um, story to go with that photo. Because again, with these photos, that's the, men look at the photos more than that's anything. That's all they, they look not, at they sometimes. Really, yeah. Since yeah. they only look at photos. And since I yeah. said earlier, you only as, you know, attractive as your worst photo. Um, these photos matter. They really, really matter. And so if there's anything that is just okay, just go out and get some new photos. If you want to hire a photographer, fantastic. There are people that do amazing jobs. I know photographers in New York. I'm sure you know from being in, in the magazine industry, you know photographers. But I would say if you're investing in your love life, invest a couple of hundred dollars and get some great dating profile photos. I can ask my ex-husband. He was a photographer. <laughs> Just kidding. That's terrible. There you go. <laughs> no, but but I'm sure you know a photographer. Um, as I said, and I think anyone who's dating online, they should every couple of years go on a photo shoot because there's something very liberating about getting your photos taken, putting on your outfits, uploading them to your profile. It's like this coming out, okay, I'm single, I own it, and I want to become a couple. So I've watched these transformations just in these photo shoots of people who felt so hopeless. And by the end of the photo shoot, they felt like so sexy in their own world that they were ready to date. It's just an amazing transformation. So um, I'm going to pull it off this so we can talk and, I'm, and then people can, uh, I think people are having questions in we can get to some of those questions. Fantastic. I love, I love the questions. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Let me, um, I'm stopping the sharing. And so guys, I, I'm a little embarrassed, um, because that took a, that took a lot. I'm sorry. Even though I'm used to being way out. A lot out, of courage. I'm being used to being way out in, in, uh, putting everything out there, writing about everything, but seeing my like little, all the stuff I did wrong, but now I'll do better. Right. So let's see what kind of questions we have. I'm going to, I'm going to call on you. Um, uh, da, da, da. If anybody has a, can you be a bit more general so that we can, okay. Sherry Snyderman, do you have a question? You, okay. I do. When you were saying, I constantly am being told that when people listen to what my life is like, that it doesn't sound like I need a man or need a relationship, that I'm perfectly happy living a fantastic life by myself. And you had mentioned it a couple of times when you were looking at her profile, that it, you don't want it to seem like there's no room for somebody. But I don't understand how you go about doing that. When how you somebody go asks, about, yeah, so how, you, how do you go about from being an independent, successful woman to suddenly wanting a man in your life and advertising for it? So that's the part where you say, my life is very full, but I have, but there's room in my heart to meet someone new. And I look forward to doing this, that, and the other. Name some of the adventures that you'd like to do together. Um, I love to go wine tasting. It would be so great to do that together. I mean, these men look at profiles and they go, what do I ask her out? Where do we go? What do we do? I mean, they really don't know what to do. So if you put in your profile, like, perfect dates, you know, oh, these are my favorite restaurants, or I enjoy walking the farmer's market, it'd be fun to do that together on a weekend and cook a meal together. So come up with some date ideas, and just help them through it. And if you do that, um, then you're sounding more not, you know, you're sounding more like a we, and that's how you have to, you have to use the word we, I look forward to meeting someone to, 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 to travel to ski to travel to ski resorts together. I look forward to meeting someone who likes to hike. I look forward to uh, going, as I said, wine tasting. Pick a couple of really ac fun activities that you would go on a date with someone. And if it's a virtual date, that's fine. Like right now, everybody's gone virtual dates still. And so, you know, you could say, you know, I'm not traveling yet, but it would be really fun to go on a virtual date and travel the museums of the world together. 
So you're going to get somebody who's like, you know, artsy, intelligent when they hear about traveling to museums and name some of your favorites. Say, I love the Louvre and the Musée d'Orsay when I'm in Paris. I love going to the Met and just immersing myself in a particular gallery. The more specific you can get, the man can visualize himself spending time with you. I think that was a really great question, Sherry. How do you project yourself as a very um, competent or you know accomplished woman, but at the same time not not too you know not not that you not so self uh, sufficient that you don't have room? So I think that was a great question, Lisa Kreiger. I think you have a question too. You can unmute yourself and ask. Her. Yeah, I've got. I, I actually got a couple of them. So my profiles. I'm. I. I was wondering if it's. A, a narrative like genies is better like oh you know this is what I've done and this is what I'm looking for or not necessarily bullet points but I think sometimes I was too rushed so I'll just like you know adventurous you know fit kayaking vegan progressive liberal whatever instead of making it a narrative is which is better I'd rather, I'd rather read and see and feel and hear a conversation because then if I'm looking at someone's profile and I can just kind of visualize having a conversation with them, if you start to bullet things, it feels like a resume or a LinkedIn profile. Okay, and real quick, another, do you mind another question? And it might be what other people wanna know. Is it really better to pay for a membership? Yes. It is, and you know, I don't really get anything out of that other than the fact that I do my dating advice for most of the apps. I would say uh, there is a difference between freemium and premium. And what I noticed during the pandemic, like Match, for instance, you cannot uh, you cannot read a message if somebody writes to you unless you pay extra to read that message or you sign up for a subscription. People think once you're a paid member and you know you got that verified check mark or whatever it may be. They think, well, they're really taking this seriously. So I think it's better to pay, but you know, sign up for three months or six months, make a commitment to whatever it may be, because you're going to be featured more often. You're going to show up in a search more often. The algorithms tend to favor paying members. And I know a lot of the apps, you know, Bumble, um, Match, Tinder, they all have you know these boost okay cube with the spotlights, where for 30 to 60 minutes for four to five dollars, you can be in the quote top spot. It's worth trying it once or twice just to see if anybody new comes into your match queue. And then I think one last question, and this might be a big one, scams. Because I I go with my gut and and I and the last couple of times, you know, there was a, a guy, he was a doctor in Yemen. So I Googled it and it was like oh, that's a red flag. This thing came up going scam, 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 scam. And then this other guy I was just talking to, he said, let's meet on Skype. And I was like, no, let's talk about Zoom. And he's like, no, I don't have Zoom, I have Skype. So I Googled dating scam Skype. Sure enough, here it comes because they can use artificial intelligence on, on Skype and it's almost impossible to do on Zoom. So it's like, okay, block him. So is there, do you have any other suggestions about scams? I do, and I talk a lot about dating safety. It's, it's really one of my biggest um, passions is to make sure people are dating safely. And all of the sites and all of us in the industry take it very seriously. So for instance, uh, Match and Tinder, the co-own Match, okay, keep it a whole bunch of the sites are co-owned by the Match group. They are now going to start doing background searches, which means they're gonna offer a service where you can pay to do a background search. But in addition, they have all of this dating advice um, in their safety center. And they have an ability, if you click on the ellipsis at the top of a profile and you see the guy in Yemen who wants to Skype and you think there's something you know, wrong about it, it, report it to the site. You can block yourself, you can report it. But for the women I know who are starting over, uh, many of them have lost either through a divorce or the death of a spouse and they're very vulnerable. And the next thing you know, they're in love with someone that lives in another country and they never meet, but then the pandemic's another reason. And then the next thing you know, they're asking for money and people are shelling out you know, a couple thousand dollars here and there for a plane ticket to visit and then they disappear. Those stories are not as common as the good people who really want to meet online, but you need to be aware when you see something. So if anybody asks you to open your wallet, um, anybody asks you for real for specific information exactly where you live, 
um, I, I always say you meet in a public place, you never tell anybody your address. You, you need to be very sort of vague and you need to go in your own vehicle, whether you take Uber or you go on your own in your, and meet in a public place and um, if you do get to that point. But as far as finding scammers online, it's usually the blurry one photo or no photo, or and which means they could either be married or they could be, you know, potentially a profile that's not authentic. And they have a lot of, there's a lot of software right now that detects these IP addresses from some questionable profiles and just, they've just pulled them right down. Yeah, and I've, I've noticed actually some of the guys that look really good in the pictures look, there's a lot of them where, I don't know if it's a thing, they, they've got their head and in the background of the pyramids and the next picture is the background say Eiffel Tower and that's all you see their head and, they, you know, and they've got all these pictures, but I'm just thinking it's superimposed on there or something. And it's just, you know, one guy had his name, uh, he said he was a doctor and he had the doctor's name tag here, but it didn't match his profile name, you know? So there's things you yes. can look for. Yeah, they're not too smuck and farts sometimes. Well, as I said, anytime you see something or somebody makes you feel uncomfortable, you unmatch, you block and you report the profile. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, Jeanette Hatch, um, do you want to ask your question? You can, un you can unmute yeah. yourself. And if you ask a question, it'd be great to see your face, guys. I thought, okay. Sorry. Um, I was just going to ask. Oops, did I stop the video? Um, so on the match, there's several questions you can answer. The, you know, how many do you suggest you uh, of those topic questions do you answer? That's a great question. A lot of the apps have prompts now. They try and make it easier for you to create a profile. And they're really trying to target you to move you towards the dating apps on your mobile phone instead of using the desktop. So I say three is the magic number. Three is a good number for a lot of things. But people don't have the bandwidth outside of three, um, outside of three prompts. And so when I write profiles for singles, we keep things short and sweet. And we ask, we ask a question, we'll make a comment about something and then you know, we'd say, how about you? But we, we try and create a dialogue from a monologue, but try not to, you know, if you write again, you leave the, write that novel, no one's going to want to meet you. Okay, thanks. And I have another quick question. So when you are um, exchanging with people, you know, you could be your pen pal forever. So I guess my question is after so many things back, um, you know, when is it more appropriate to let's move it to the phone, let's meet or whatever, or is it just, you know, I know there's no magic number, but how are you knowing when to move it, move it from these pen pallers to, to more substance? Yeah, I call it the digital pen pal syndrome. Yeah. There is a, a digital courting process and it does start with matching, having the great profile matching, and then reaching out again, bumble the women have to write first. But after two or three exchanges, it's it's a good time to um, hop on a phone call because if you have a great phone date and people are home now more than ever and no more than 20 minutes and it goes well, then your goal after that is to say, you know, I really love to continue the conversation and hopefully we'll meet. If you don't move it forward, you know, everybody's talking to 10 people at once, someone else will. And uh, there have been too many times when women say to me, I like this guy and, you know, I waited a day to write back and now he's in a relationship. And I said, well, you don't know what um, point in the process they are with somebody else that they're chatting with. So these matches go stale really fast if you don't write back. So you have to move forward. The squeaky wheel gets, the, you know, the digital love deal. You need to, um, if somebody writes to you, don't say, I'm going to wait an hour and write back. If you're near your phone, write back. If you're not near your phone, when you are and you see it, you write back. And the best thing you could do to move these matches forward is turn on the push notifications on each individual app and in, in your mobile phone. And that will send a notification that you got a message from Jeff. Cool. And I guess the last question, I guess that's almost everyone's thing, but I can't juggle many at once. I don't know if you have an opinion of how many you should be juggling, but I was like, I'm just new to this and I'm like, oh, this stresses me to do um, too many. So I don't know if that's a personal preference or how many to juggle. Well, 
juggle as in dating in person or juggle chatting on your mobile phone? Kind of both. So I was, I've already met one and then I'm meeting another one Saturday and I'm kind of like, I, I don't even want to look because I see others on there, but I'm like, no, that I don't think I can even deal with it until I see how these others pan out. Then, so then you do of- what you do, what's comfortable for you. And I feel that, um, again, I back to the magic number of three, it's hard to manage, you know, deeper communications with more than three people at once. And I remember one time I, I worked on a profile for a really great guy and, um, Oh, total packaged, you know, really successful, real family oriented, love to travel. And his original match profile had him holding like a fish, you know, anyone ever see those fish photos? <laughs> they're, they're really unappealing. So, but, but, you know, so I don't remember what my, what my point was, but I, oh, the point was he, um, suddenly he was getting all these hits, all these women were writing to him because he had this, this great profile. We did professional photos. And he said, Julie, I don't know what to do. I'm dating two women now. I'm not sleeping with either of them, but I'm like regularly dating two women and it feels unnatural and it feels uncomfortable for me. What should I do? And I said, well, keep dating them both. And at some point one will, you know, rise to the top and the other one will, you know, fall off. Either they'll lose interest, you'll lose interest or they'll meet someone else. And you know, three weeks later, he decided to become exclusive with this one woman. Um, they've been happily living together for five years now. But he was uncomfortable dating two people. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Oh, like so, and each of the different um, sites have a different personality. Can you kind of go over the different kinds of sites if you're looking for something more casual or something long term or something local? Is there some kind of magic of which site to use for different things? And uh, uh, over- related to that, somebody else asked about for our age group, if there's certain um, ones that are better. Right. Well, you're, you're on Match and Match tends to you know run the gamut. So you've got people that are looking to get married and have families and you're looking at people starting over um, in their, even their 70s and their 80s that are on Match. When I worked on the uh, Today Show profile with Maria Schreiber, we used Our Time, which is owned by Match because it's for singles 50 plus. Mm. But most of those people are using the desktop computer. They're not using the mobile phone. Uh, but I would say that, and then there's OKCupid has more New York Times wedding announcements than any other dating app. So it used to be Tinder's for hookups, eHarmony's for serious, and everybody had their like box. But what happens is, now everybody's online and they're tired of one app that isn't working and they're moving on to another. So we're seeing a lot of people of all ages and all relationship types on Tinder, getting married, having families. And we're seeing people on all the different apps back to three, start with one primary app that you like the best. And if it's okay, Cupid or plenty of fish, stick with that and make sure you log on every morning and every night and then roll in like one or two others. And they could be niche or specific dating apps. If you're a vegetarian, you find a dating app for, for vegans. If you're very interested in, in um, dating somebody within your own faith, then you look for the Jewish dating sites, the Catholic dating sites. Um, there are the niche dating sites for different types of their sites for college. Like the league is a great dating app. It links to your LinkedIn profile, but you've got to have a college degree. So there's, well, so there's some. You. I can tell you that J-Date, you have people who are my age who want girls who are 20 and 30 year olds. So, you know, What's so I, you're, you're saying that's the Jewish date one. So oh, you're saying, and I would, I would try J-Wed because a J-Date um, doesn't have it. I would probably try J-Wed, but I would stay away from J-Swipe because J-Swipe is like the Tinder for, um, for Jewish young singles looking for so Is there like a place we can go that's a, that, analyzes the different ones and says that this is the kind of thing you're looking for because saying each each one of them is just kind of hard to siphon through them and this is a good time it is hard to siphon through them yeah i was gonna say you have a a book that's that right julie oh right uh well my, my first book was the perils of cyber dating um confessions of a hopeful romantic looking for love online But yesterday, I just relaunched a a new site, a a little digital facelift on cyber dating expert. And I released a free ebook called Swiping Right, 
the Cyber Dating Expert Guide to Finding Love on Your Mobile Phone. It, it's free. So if you go to cyberdatingexpert.com forward slash flirt, you can sign up for the free digital flirt and it will take you to read this book with all the latest information on different apps Thank and, you. Um, that's great. and profile tips. Uh, and that's that's my gift to everyone. I was really a lot of fun, a lot of fun writing it. And uh, I would say that it's not a one size fits all formula. And it's probably the biggest question I get asked is, "What's your favorite site, Julie?" Uh, maybe I have a favorite flavor of ice cream, but I don't have a favorite <laughs> dating site. Um, and so, um, who else? Chris, Kristen Longnecker, you have a question. If you want to unmute yourself, sure, happy to. Um, thank you, Julie, for being here. Thanks for this uh, topic and your discussion on it. Um, my question is, you know, my title is VP and I'm at a financial technology firm. Um, and um, I could see where that could attract, like, I don't want to be anybody's sugar mama, right? <laughs> like, I want you to understand uh, where I am. Like, I'm not looking for somebody who um, manages a Subway restaurant, right? Um, but are there, maybe there's different standards for women's titles versus men's titles. Should I just say I'm in communication or is that feeding into the patriarchy and I should celebrate my title and my accomplishments? Celebrate your title. It's such a big, huge, you know, you worked hard to get that title. Um, you deserve it. It's only intimidating if you talk about work all the time in your profile. And if you talk mm -hmm. about things that you do outside of work, the title can just, you know, stay by itself and stand on its own. I had a client once who uh, went to Harvard Law School and we uh, put her on Bumble and Match. And she didn't want to say that she went to Harvard. She said, I can't drop the H bomb. And I'm like, why not? And so it took her a while to feel comfortable saying, and she was dating guys that were younger than her and she didn't need anybody for his mon their money, but she thought going to Harvard was gonna be intimidated. I said, you know, be proud of your accomplishments, but just don't talk about work 24 seven. Um, that, was that helpful, Kirsten, Kirsten? So yeah, uh, I think that's I think that's that sounds good. I think you should put your title. Damn, it's a good one. It's cool. Own okay. it. Yeah, yeah. And, and only, um, I do want to say, like, okay. in, there's some cliches. Okay, women want tall, dark, and handsome, and financially secure. Men wants you know younger, more attractive. You know, we hear all these cliches. But I read these profiles, and the men are saying, "I'm looking for a drama-free woman who's financially secure." And I'm like, oh, really? You put that in your profile? Um, at the end of the day, you just need to be with someone that you connect with. And if they lose their job, you're still connecting with them and you're cheering them on to find another one. Okay, so, so what that guy wrote was not good. I mean, I'm looking for somebody who's, who's a, not a drama queen and not a... Um, well, it sounds to me like, you know, he got out of a toxic relationship and he's bringing it into his dating profile. Oh, I see. So I'd rather say, talk about the process. I'm looking, you know, I'm looking for someone who has, a, you know, who is vivacious and 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 outgoing and can join me on as I like to I love to go on cruises and is interested in joining me on cruises has the time but you know this whole like equal I'm looking for an equal partner says to me I'm going Dutch treat on that date oh, yeah. oh that's yeah. a good, that's a good deciphering there Anna did you have a question Anna Lundgren I thought you I thought you put your hand up hi yeah. Um, I just, I got all excited when I heard the, um, you know, I'm looking for a drama free woman. So, and the reason <laughs> is because I've done some online dating and I'm, I was in a relationship off of match for about four and a half years. I was also in a very, very long marriage and I'm good friends with my ex now. Um, and so I'm, I guess eventually I'll be back on the scene. And I thought I would, you know, thank you so much for this opportunity. I, I just figured I would dip my toe in the water uh, just to kind of see what it felt like. But, and, and you can tell me what you, your thoughts are on this, Julie, because obviously you're the expert, but in my opinion, 
a man who's not okay with me having emotions uh, who is saying, I want a drama free, like, I'm so sorry, I'm a human being, I'm going to have feelings. If that turns you off, move on. You know, that's just seriously, I think it's code for like, don't tell me about your feelings. And I can't be with a man like that. So that's something I feel like I've kind of learned. It's a this. red flag. Yeah. It's a, it red, flag. a, it's a red flag. red flag. Yeah. It what, really are some, is. what are some other red flags, uh, Julie, that you see a lot? Wait, wait. Yeah, so most of the red flags are, are in the photos. And you know, we talked about photo selection. Somebody asked me at something I was speaking at recently, what, what's the worst photo you've seen in a dating profile? I said, it's the over and over and over again photos of a man in front of a Ferrari or a Bentley that isn't his. <laughs> it's like, it just, oh my gosh, it's, it's just, just so in your face. And maybe it's his, maybe it's not his, but I'd rather be with someone who, if he has a Ferrari, he's showing up in his SUV for his first date because he just, you know, would rather be understated and want to get, you know, connect on a heart level rather than on a commodity level. I did see somebody when, you know, my little tour through the dating site, I saw somebody who was standing in front of an Audi and then had a picture of just the Audi. <laughs> was he a car dealer? <laughs> And we're like, what? <laughs> so that yeah, definitely definitely a red flag. I love I love my car. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's yeah, that's good to know those red flags. So um, what about this? The people, the, this idea that men always want younger women. Not always. Um, there are so many men that are looking for somebody age appropriate that they can communicate with. They like the same music. They like the same TV shows. Um, I kind of had a rule, like never date anybody closer in age to your parents or to your children because your children are going to get upset. And, and so I really don't think, and I said this earlier when she read the bio, age is no longer a barrier to love. There's a real trend now of, of, um, women dating younger men. And we did a segment on the Today Show about this not too long ago. And with a 25 year age difference between one couple, and it was the women were the bread breadwinners and they were and they had these guys that were self sufficient, but not as, you know, not on the totem pole, the financial totem pole, the women were here, the men brought a lot of emotional nurturing to the relationship, they had something going on anyway, they weren't just living off of them. But women are now going, you know what, I took care of somebody who was kind of sick. And, you know, I'm looking for somebody, if I'm energetic, who's as energetic as I am. So women are dating younger, too. They're dating the way that men had since caveman days. Yes, I feel very strongly. I would like to um, to have men that I'm considering take a physical. <laughs> That's what I don't, yeah. I don't want to. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But you don't want to get stuck with somebody who's, you know, not taking care of themselves, I guess. Linda? What, what, do you have a question? Oh, thank you. Hi. Um, based on having met someone through ne Next Tribe, I, I joined Bumble. And yesterday I went out on my very first coffee date. And, oh. um, Congratulations. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. I have to tell you, it's been so many years. But I did go on this date. And one of the things um, I of course, on that I, I'm in Bumble, and of course you only have your first name and not your last name. And during the conversation, he asked me what my last name was, and I told him. And um, I, I anyway, I went, I got to the car, and I punched in my name with my zip code, and everything about me came up right away on Google. You know, my addresses, where I've been, every a lot of you know. So. Um, I feel like for myself personally, from that experience going forward, I'm not going to be my last name any longer. I don't want people to know would, where yeah. I live. And what... Yeah, it's first very... of all, people are going to Google each other. It's like a kiss and tell. You, you Google, but you don't tell. But if somebody would ask me what my last name is and I'm all over Google, I would just say, oh, I, I'll tell you on the third day. You know, you just kind of be fun and flirty about it. And you know, keep your privacy, your privacy, because if the date goes south, you don't want this person showing up on your doorstep. Right. 
Good point, good point. And that's just something that Lisa, you had asked, Lisa Krieger had asked that same thing. So yeah, so I like that and be be flirty. Yeah, go, oh, we'll get there soon or whatever, you know. Yeah, because um, this way, this way they, they'll think, well, they, they like me enough that they do want to go on a second date because you have to give men the cue that you want to go on a second date because um, the moon dates are called one and done dates and um, they're exhausting. And everybody's wondering when, when, when can I get off this, you know, merry-go-round of one and done dates, but, you know, do not reveal information that could tie into where you live, your financial information, anything like that, how much real estate you own, you know, keep that close to the vest. Um, to oh, well, one that thing though, when, oh, sorry. Uh, just to continue with that, he did ask me if I'd like to meet again for lunch. And I knew from the conversation that I didn't want to pursue that. And it was very uncomfortable. So I, I don't, I'm not even sure what I said exactly. Is there, is there a good exit, so to speak? Yeah, the, the, my, my favorite exit is if you meet with someone and they were kind enough to take you out for lunch or dinner, or carve time in their schedule, and treated you to something nice and you're not feeling it, um, just say, you know, thank you so much for the offer to get together again. I really enjoyed meeting you, but I don't think we have enough in common to move this relationship forward. And I'm looking for someone who has a lifestyle very close to mine or the opposite. We just have, we're like, you're like the carbon copy mirror version of myself. And I know how I am and opposites attract in my life. And I don't think we're a fit, but you know, if I meet someone that I think would be a good fit for you, you know, I would love to introduce them to you because part of date, part of dating is um, gracefully exiting. And I look at each date, not as, is this the person I'm going to ride on the sunset with? It's like, how can I expand my social circle? And so dating is a social networking experience because this is how we're meeting people at this point in our life, because our friends aren't having parties and fixing us up. Uh, people aren't going into the office that much. Most people meet through work. So the last thing you want to do is be a rude, bad date. And when this person sitting across from you might have a best friend or invite you to a Super Bowl party where you could meet someone else. So okay. be gracious. Oh, no, no, no. I totally was. But, you know, I. You weren't feeling it. <laughs> I, no, I totally knew I wasn't going to continue. He was certainly very, very nice and all, but I just said, thank you. It was nice to meet you, but I don't think so. Something like that, you know, it wasn't, you know. <laughs> okay. And um, I, I think that was, it sounds like you did a good job. Linda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. My question, okay. my question is, so on these first, since I've never done this at all, uh, and obviously no one's going to be contacting me because my profile sucks, but anyway, um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, <laughs> should you expect them to pay for it? Now, what is the rule? Because I don't like that. Good point. I mean, good point. Yeah, you know, it's a big issue that people ask, you know, should we split the check? Who pays for the first date? Is it the person asking? Is it the person um, who selected the restaurant if it was a pricey restaurant? The, the rule is for the first date, and this is to eternity, and it went back again to the cave, the cave days, um, the men usually pay for the first date. Mm. And if you lean in an offer, uh, you're sending the message to the guy that, you know, I'm friend zoning you. You don't want to do that if you want a second date. So oh. the bottom line is let yourself be treated to something nice. And if it moves forward, you can always pick up tickets to something somewhere um, or, or do something where you can contribute in another way. But traditionally, uh, you know, I tell the guys all the time, dating's expensive. Go where you can afford to go. And if it's coffee dates, then limited to coffee dates. And if it's lunch, limited to lunch. If it's happy hour, you know, when things are priced a little bit less, you know, don't drink too much, you know, have one drink limit and, um, and go to happy hour and have a cutoff time. And is that a good idea? Um, I mean, having a cutoff time in general or how, I mean. It is. These, these marathon dates that go for hours and hours and hours, um, there, there are these fast tracks, what I call the love bombing relationships. You're just showered with so much emotion, affection, and attention. You need to have, you need to be busy. You need to say, oh gosh, I'm having so much fun with you. I would love to continue the conversation and get together again, but I have to get up early tomorrow. I've got a project due. 
you need to end the date after an hour. If it's a phone call or a Zoom call, 20 minutes, but do not go on dates that are over two hours because, you know, leave some mystery and, you know, intrigue for date number two or three. Okay. And is there any advice about uh, drinking as far as like how much you should, you said about somebody limiting to one drink. I think that was for financial, but what about just for your, you know, having the wherewithal and, and presence of mind? How do you advise on that? I, I'm not even a fan of alcohol on dates at all, but I would say for a first date, a glass of wine and maybe don't even finish it is it's social if you like to drink wine, but don't get a second or third glass and be too slosh to get home. And then your judgment is impaired and you know you might end up in a situation that you're going to regret. So my feeling is, is you know one drink max on a first date and I count drinks. I watch someone on date, I go on these faux dates with people, you know, these dress rehearsals and there's somebody who drank three or four drinks in one day. And I'm like, really? You know, that says to me that you might have, you know, an alcohol abuse issue. So maybe they're nervous, but four drinks on one date is a red flag. Okay. All right. Um, any other may, I think we covered on, I know we're, we're out of time, but my, I feel like we could go on and on. So I, I'm going to really encourage everyone to get um, Julie's book, Swiping Right. And I put her a, a website on the in the chat so please go there i think i'm sure you guys just have any more questions the more we talk the more questions so she's going to address them all in that book and she also does date dating consultation so you can hear about that anything you want to say julie about how that works dating your dating consultant well, so i have a program it's called irresistible profiles um you can go to irresistibleprofiles.com but it's also just on the cyber dating um, expert page you just click on coaching and there's a variety of different ways that i work with people most people are these days signing up for longer longer term packages like the three-month plan which is like the digital matchmaker vip and some people just want like a, pro a profile critique and that's all they need is a profile critique and they're on their way so, so it really runs the gamut from profile critiques to really ongoing coaching um, in going steady is totally in love and digital matchmaker. They're, they're fun and they work. And I've been doing it for over 25 years. So I would love to tell you that there's a one size fits all plan for everyone, but there's not, but there is something for everyone. There's free advice. There's the free ebook. The site is loaded with thousands of articles. And then of course it's private one-on-one -on -one coaching. That's where the magic really happens. Good. Well, I feel like I, I got a treat then, Julie. You, you I got a, a, a consultation on my profile. So I'm, I'm gonna go, okay, at this point, I feel like I should just ditch match and go to a new one because I've kind of ruined myself there. <laughs> um, is that what you would do? Uh, well, I don't know, but Luis seemed to like you. You didn't write back to him. Oh, I know. I, I have I I got matched with Luis. I got matched. I got matched with somebody else who was who's fifty one. So anyway, <laughs> so anyway. Well, I'm just saying, don't limit don't limit yourself. Whatever age range you think you're looking for, add five years up, add five years down, and you can decide. You know when you match whether they're you know a good match for you or not. Okay. But don't make the full decision based on age. Okay. Very well said and and good advice. So thank you so much, Julie, and thanks all of you for joining us. I'm going to make this recording available. And also I wanna write a story based on this. So, so we'll have a lot of this in writing because excellent, excellent advice, Julie. I really appreciate it. So anyway, well, thank you all. And we have another uh, uh, event next Thursday about uh, health, how to reinvent your health. So lots of great topics and we uh, hope you'll join us for that. And Julie, happy, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> happy Valentine's Day to all of you. Uh, one last thing. Yes. Sunday is Galentine's Day. It's oh. a day to celebrate your female friendships. So if you uh, get together with some girlfriends, have lunch, send each other chocolate, uh, make sure to celebrate the women in your life, the friendships that you have on Galentine's Day. I love that. Thank you for the reminder. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.